welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode we're going to try and get you out there aboard our boat, High Sea Drifter. Nice bright yellow boat that everybody can see coming from miles away. And it matches my top, obviously. Yellow's my favourite colour. Going to be trying for Black Bream. Now, Bream are a species you can get all around the world in the tropics. They live over reef, they like rocky ground. So even if you're on holiday somewhere, really the same sort of principle applies here that I'm going to be telling you about. So, Black Bream, off the south coast of England, a popular but perhaps diminishing species. Now, years ago they used to be really, really popular, and unfortunately they taste nice. So yes, they got absolutely mullered and caned. And I caught a lot myself as well, you know, we used to keep them and eat them and I think we used to bake them. But, put all my Bream back now. Uh, writings on the wall there, if we keep killing fish, there'll be nothing for tomorrow. So, I was out recently doing a hound, a smooth hound film with uh, Wayne Combin, and something I noticed was I had one telescopic rod down for whatever pouting, got a few black bream on it, but I noticed a lot of rattles on the big rods. And I got to thinking about it, hang on, I've got, you know, whole squid baits on there, and they're anchored on the bottom for big stuff, you know, bigger than hounds, toad and whatever, and I thought, I know the bite because it's quite distinctive. Uh, you know, pouting has a soft bite on the rod top, but a bream is bang, 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 really, really sharp, rattle, you know? And I was sitting watching these bites, and I thought, well, obviously I'm not gonna catch them on a big hook, but if I put the big bait down like this, and it has a squig with the tentacles at the back, I was pretty sure these bream were coming up behind it, are banging away and tearing the tentacles, because every time I wound the whole squid up, Head was gone, so they eaten that away and left the bulk of the um, main bait, main frame of the squid. So, the old grey matter was cooking away there. It's done quite a bit of cooking recently, I have to be careful, I might fall over. And I thought, what about if I drop down my bream hook right behind my main line? So, along come the bream, start tearing away at the squid tentacles on my big bait that I got down for big rays and tobe and stuff. From here, they might just see my small hooks. Well, I'll tell you what. It was an 8-0 job. I got eight black bream, just not really one after the other, but I got to thinking about that. I thought, that's a really good method. So, what I've rigged up, I'm going to be fishing a couple of uptiders, what they call uptiders, we can cast out from the side of the boat. There's going to be a couple of those going out. And bream rods like these dropped right down the bottom. Light ones, really, really light, because it's you know, 30, 40 feet of water. But let's have a look at the rig here. Let me just show you the rig. He said, put my hook in his finger. Now, Reasoning on this theory, I thought, right, because I, do you know what I mean, I really like big fish. I don't mind catching small fish, but I like anything from sort of Moby Dick upwards. So, I suppose if I could catch that Kraken that's in that uh, Pirates of the Caribbean film, that would be quite handy. Lots of squid tentacles on it. Here we go, guys. This is for big fish, but a bonus of getting a small fish as well, like black bream. Nice Ato hook, just an offset one there. Now this leader here is 80 pound, I think it's called Shore Shot, it's garden sells it, garden tackle sells it, Shore Shot. Um, so you can use it for shot lead if you I'm using it for leader, 70 pounds, but quite short, like two feet. Then barrel swivel and a nice little slider there, little sliding boom, I don't think you can see that there. So that when I drop down, this goes down and hopefully doesn't tangle. Now the rest of this here, is only 15 pound line. It's Andy Premium, so Andy Premium is very strong, 15 pound line. So let's say three feet to my swivel there, little barrel swivel number 10, which I thread the line through my rod rings, out the rod top, tie it onto my barrel swivel. That effectively, if you can see, that is my rig. Big hook on the bottom, bit like the Wessex rig really. But what I've done here, I've tied it shorter than this hook. The big hook's shorter than the small, so they don't tangle on the drop down like this. I've tied, this is my bream hook, potentially. I've tied a blood loop. A blood loop makes it stand off from the main line. You get them on mackerel feathers. It's in our, one of our films, I know it's part one or part two, how to tie fishing knots is in there, blood loop. But then what I've done here is I've used carp hook with a wider gape, and I just push the loop, this blood loop, through the eye of the hook, around the bend, and you can just see it like that, and then I pull it very slowly, there's no knot, it's a loop, you can see that's a loop, right, pull snug, because when I drop this down, the lead here hits the bottom, and look how that loop stands off perfectly, I 
just rotate it there. Stands off perfectly. Now you, we can put it on one or the other, it doesn't really matter because you, you put it on the reverse way, you'll get the hook hanging up. So the theory is, folks, we could get a big fish on this, but if the bream come and start attacking this whole squid bait, which is what I'm putting on here, there is one here that is bream size. It's a carp hook. That's the theory. So a sort of double-edged sword, if you like. Now, the other thing is, that's on my heavier up tie rods, and I'm gonna use one down tider. Fixed ball wheel, this is the proper, if you like, the proper one for bream. Fixed ball wheel, 15 pound Andy line on it. The rod is just six feet long. Now this one, <laughs> stop it Graham, stop it. This was very cheap. They do not come any cheaper than this one. This one came out of a skip in Ireland. And do you know why it was thrown into the skip? Because the tip was broken. Excuse me? You get a hacksaw, you saw off the remaining end of the tip, you get a ring for a couple of quid or so, a tip ring, you glue it back on, c'est le voila, monsieur. Whatever that means. You've got a rod, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And I've caught a lot of fish on this. It's quite a nice little fun rod. Like a kid's outfit, of course it is, obviously a little kid's outfit for fun. But this one, I've got a standard two hook standoff pattern master. So let's say I've got four feet of trace, 15 pound mono, a barrel swivel. Now, I'll tell you what, there's a little, there's a little trick here. I've used a three-way swivel at the top to tie it to the main line because I don't know whether to tell you guys on YouTube, can you be trusted? Because what you can do to help attract fish, get a loose piece of line, tie it off here. You can either get a sponge soaked in pilchard oil or you can even tie a big fillet there and that drops down. The smell from that goes down towards these hooks. Don't say, I don't give you all my best fishing tips. That's one you probably have never heard of before. Now, same principle. Lead at the bottom might be a lot lighter than this. With bream, you only want enough lead to hold the bottom. If you don't want a great big chunk of lead, this is four ounces. As soon as the tide eases where we're fishing, I'm dropping down to two, one, and half an ounce. It goes down like this, and then one blood loop, about, what, four inch drop there. But also, by leaving this double, this blood loop, instead of snipping it and making a single, it's quite rigid. So 15 is effectively 30, I can assure you the bream do not care what it is because a piece of fishing line in the water just looks like a piece of weed really, doesn't it? So same there, I've left that one a touch longer and there you can see there's a loop. So all I do, get the eye of the hook, push it through the eye of the hook, a half inch around like that, snug it up against the eye. That's that. Final little tip I use. Now when I go bream fishing, I'm not just putting a piece of squid or mackerel on the hook for bait. I'm going to be putting a lot of rubbish down as well. I'm going to be putting chum, or some people call it rubby dubby, the good old English way is rubby dubby. I'm going to be using one of these, which is a bait dropper that I've made from a piece of four when it's drain pipe, soil pipe, not drain pipe, soil pipe. I've got a coat hanger runner there. I pile all holes drilled throughout it. I pile in there all mashed up fish. Snap it shut. That's just bent there, like you can see holes. I've got a little swivel I can put there. I tie this into my strong rod, not my light rod. Lead on here, it goes down. I jig it a couple of times like this. Bang, it opens up, all the food comes out. We're nearly ready to go fishing, folks. All I've got to do now is just show you quickly how to put the squid on, the big hook and the small hook. Okay, here we go, bream fishing, best bait. No shadow of a doubt, guys, it's squid. Now, I've got my cutting board in here. Please do not tell my wife I bought my boat cutting board and I'm putting it on my pool table. She will not be happy. What do you need? A nice sharp knife. I used to have a beautiful normal felicity knife and I snapped it cutting up chum. I had about 25 years. This cuts up the same chum and is less expensive. It's just a regular knife, keep it sharp. Elasticated thread, rod of elasticated thread. I don't know what this one is, Storms, I think. Real cheapo ones, that does the job. Uh, napkin to wipe your hands. <laughs> Stinking squid. Actually, guys, this is fresh. I normally buy them in big boxes, about five pounds. Get them off the way and get some for me. Unfortunately, I left this one in the garage and it's thawed out and I forgot about it. So slightly pink, but it will suffice it. It will, it will suffice to do the job I'll show you. Right, I'll get these down there. And this is how I whiz up my baits for black bream and maybe a bonus big fish. I like to keep my options open. Like I say, people, this is the squid that you buy. 
Got the long grabbing tentacles there. Probably showed people before they didn't realize it has two long tentacles to grab their prey. These retract into the main gripping area and it pops it down its, its mouth there. It's his little eyes, his pretty eyes, hadn't he? No, it's a cod bait. And it has little veins on the side. Yeah, that's pretty much as most people would know squid. I say they are a bit dark. Now, you can use these hole. In fact, if I was cod fishing, I would use these hole. But people like to clean them. So, if you're going bream fishing, it's like this. Just put the back of the knife on the head, or just pull it off by hand, and pull, and the head and guts come out. Yep. It's mucky. That stuff there, the white goo, is no good. Slice off, you see that at the back of the eyes. Now this goes in that chum bu bucket thing I made, you know, the tube, chum tube, whatever you want to call it. That goes in and that goes down. Davy Jones locker. Now, you can nip off those long ones, put those to a side, chum. Now these little ones here, those small ones, you can still use. That is actually the mouth in there, in case anybody wants to see that. You can see that, guys. That's the mouth in there. It's actually a beak. It doesn't have teeth, it has a beak in there. And it folds around like this. And yum, 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 yum. <coughs> Eats his prey down like that. So now you know how a squid works. You can cut off behind the eyes here, or front of the eyes, like this. Bosh. Hook bait or chum, or a pair of eyeballs. If you haven't bought your own glasses, Use his. Now these ones just pull apart and they make nice little what I call tipping baits. They make nice little, little bits that you can just tip off on the end of a hook. Really, really, if you can see that there, really small, but it's ideal for tipping off on the tip of a hook and it wiggles, it wiggles around the current. So keep those. The main part, the main body, you lay down, put that to the side, run the knife in one side, this is a very sharp knife, as you can see. Pop it out, turn it over, and just gently scrape with the blade. Don't cut through it. Scrape it, all the muck out from inside. And part of that, you will see, is the backbone. Which is just like a piece of plastic. It does indeed look like plastic, but it's not. That's their, that's their backbone. So you've learned two things there. Turn the blade over. Now, they... You can scrape either way, this way, or I've found it slightly easier, scraping from the head. Now look at that, look at that, beautiful, straight down to the tail, and within that, what do you do with a squid, you never know which is the front, which is the back. Scrape with that beautiful white meat, and I've also got rid of, if you see these two veins there, those little wing bits, I've also scraped those off as well. So I just nip it off square there, there is my piece, now you can wash this as well if you want, but the inside obviously is fine. All you've got to do is just keep it nice and flat like that and just run your knife along it. But I like to make it to a point. So I go one, one way, and you can see this, I go thick there to thin here. Perhaps you can just make that out like thick to thin. Push to a side, make little diamonds of it. Thick to thin. In fact, if you, if you rotate around here, look, you can use it like a star. Thick to thin, thick at the top, thin at the bottom. And the reason I do that is because when I hook it, I hit hook. Some people just hook the thick end, uh, you know, at the top. Some people like to have the bulk of it, hook it with the thick end at the bottom. I personally just like to hook it like this. Let me show you. So there's the strips. You got. I cut them all up so you have got plenty of strips ready to rock and roll and go. You don't want to be faffing around doing this. Knock a load of strips up. Cut a couple of squid up. You get a bream, get back down again. All I do is get my, my carp hook there, I go through it once, I go through it twice, then that little double loop there, I pop it right over the eye of the hook, both of them, I put it through without breaking the bait too much to there. Right, and then I just go round, turn the hook around that way, put a little bend in it, the same as the bend of the hook, pop it through, and that should lay, you can see that perfectly flat there, and all that, that's sharp enough. Now the hooks, you can see there, it's hanging, and that's how it's going to hang. That is ideal black breaming. But that's for the small hook that I told you it hangs up. For the bigger hook, in case there's a big fish down. And what happens is, you see, I put a whole squid down, and the bream come and hammer all these tentacles away, and you see the rod top going da 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 da. So I, that's why I figured 
that, do you know what, I could, I could maybe catch anything big down there as a banker. This is almost acting as ground bait for the bream anyway. So I go through once, leave all this hole twice. I'm stitching this. It's a stitch up hole, no. Three, four. So you can see, I just put it tight. That hangs really nicely. Now some people double that hook over and just go through the eyes like this, yucky. That's probably a good way to do it. And then any fish doesn't pull the head off. So let me wipe my hands a second. Then what I do with that to help it is if you get some of this elasticated thread, as I say, it's as cheap as chips. And I would suggest starting from the bottom, just bind it around and around quite tight. I'd like to leave those tentacles there. Right, up the shank of the hook, it's almost, it's almost, if you can see that, folding around the shank of the hook like a tube. Bind all over those little wings as well. There we go. I've got drips all over the top of this pool table. She's gonna know I've been in there. I'm gonna be in big trouble. Not that she plays pool. I snap it off, he says. I said this was cheap elastic. There we go. I snap that off and then I just bind it around the tip, nice and tight. Now this elastic, all you do is just keep winding till you either run out of it or it snaps as you did there. And there is, ah, it's disgusting, but there you go. There's my big fish bait with, if you can just see that there, the hook point protruding and that's nice and firm. So that's tough for the bream to nibble away, but they can nibble away at these tentacles. And I don't mind that because my small hook's up, up here, further up. So there you go. There's your main squid bait, and then on top of that, you've got all your little strip baits you cut up for the bream. So one attracts the other, but guys, with a big bait out like this, we could come up with something nice as well. I like to leave a big bait out, not just to attract the bream, but could get big fish as well. As we say now, it's totally awesome fishing time. All we're gonna do is add water. I've got Mike with me in the boat, our film editor. Let's see if we can't get a little session on the black bream. Well, we're here on the broom spot. So we've been here probably five minutes, I'd say. We've got the chum bag down, which we've showed you. And we are on to our first broom. Weather was not as expected, actually. Oh, it's, oh, it's a mackerel, sorry. It's a mackerel, what a rarity. <laughs> it's got a nice one as well. Yeah. Well, he's obviously coming on the uh, on a chum bag we put down. Yeah, keep that one for bait, that's for sure. If not, tea. This is a doggy. Most sea fishermen will know what this is. A doggy and a strangulating mess. I mean, what a state that poor chap's got himself into. Let's get him back in the water and hopefully I don't see him again for four or five years. Well, we're getting a mac attack here. We've had three mac, this is three mackerel, this is the fourth mackerel. And uh, it's not the target species we want, but we will take it. You can use it for bait. Oh, yeah, another mackerel. Another mackerel, decent size as well. I was out of Wayne the other day, feathering all day, nothing. And you come out with these little strip baits that we made up with a squid strip. And they're taking those and that's fishing. You just don't understand, yeah. you know, why it is they do that. But we'll, we'll take them. Nice mackerel, good eating size too. It is, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice right. one. Well, following on from Michael, with great skill and dexterity, I can tell you I haven't got a mackerel. I'm hoping it's the target species. Although he's zooming around a bit. 
no, 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 we got the bream. At least it shows you that that chum we put down and keep changing the chum bag. Let's hope this doesn't fall off because I look really stupid, won't I? It is a bream. Oh, lovely jubbly. Now it's not a big one. It's probably going to spike me. See him bend up. Now this is their defence mechanism, he's here. If you look here, you can see all these spines along here. And don't go for the big belly grab because underneath their belly, right at the leading edge here, are some more spines. Ouch! So the best way to get hold of me, I find, is here, around the outside, and you just push down on the hook. Look how easy that came out. Very, very small hooks. They're freshwater hooks, not using big ones. I know it's about size 10, but it's a long shank. And I got that idea from America where they catch a similar fish to this. We actually use it for live bait. It's called a pinfish. And it's very, very similar to this. Obviously, it's not as big as this, but same sort of species. <laughs> and the same number of spikes. It's only a little wee one, and we're going to put it back. But that's black bream, and we're going to go fish. Well, let's see if we get some more. We haven't been in more than about 20 minutes. So it's a dogfish, four mackerel, black bream. Are there more to come? I hope so. But we're putting back. Just wait for the air to turn blue when he spikes me. He'll go straight away. Gone. Yeehaw. Well, they found us now. Starting to get a few bites. Seems like the mackerel have gone off and the bream are coming on. This is why we use these light rods because they're really good sport just on light tackle. You can actually sit down and catch them. Yeah, it's a bream and 11 other fishing lines. 23 hooks. You know I said mind out for the spines. <laughs> you come on high sea drifter. You got one mind out for all the other lines of fish hooks. There he is. Nice small bream. This seems to be the average this year. Quite small down here. We're down towards the hounds in Brackleton Bay. And it's been, a, I would say, a poor year this year. It's 2013. But you can come down and have some really good fish in there. So remember this. Let him get his business out of the way. Flip flapping around. Grab him on either side. There's his spins. It, it spines all there. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Take the hook, push down, pop it out. I can still use that squid again, I love it. Now these ones, you can't exactly hold on the tips of your fingers because they also got spines down here as well. And there you can see a pretty little black, black bream there. And let's hope we get a bigger one. And the boats are pouring in on us. One, two, three, racing in on us. Just to get them to come even closer. Look guys, we've just caught a black bream. Probably be tied up to us in a minute. And there's something disgusting down here, guys. What is that? It looks like I've got huge jaws trying to bite on my oh, rod. Oh, fish, fish, oh, fish, 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 fish. Oh, oh, oh. Hit it. I've got fish on here and down there. While I bite this, is a huge cuttlefish body, I think. Oh, let's get this around. Oh, hang on, hang on, guys. This is my little... Uh, Oh, he's come off, he's come off. He popped off. I think that was a real decent bream. But you can just see there, that's the body of a cuttlefish, I think. So something's chewed it up and eaten it. Oh no, I've hooked it. Oh my God. <laughs> what is that? What is that? What is a big fish, guys? Big fish is not a bream. Not a bream. Oh, not, oh no, not a bream. Now listen, this could be on the bream gear, but it was my rig of attracting the bream around that big squid. Oh dear, dear, dear. Hang thumb. on a minute. A big thumb. Do it smooth, do it smooth. I just hope he doesn't go around the rubby bag. We're using the a old chum beach bag. Casting reel here. Yeah, that's that uh, new Akios reel, yep. which is really smooth. But we caught some big fish. Mike's had the biggest fish on this rod, oh. believe it or not, was a 140 pound tarpon. Easily the best fight of my life on this rod ever. Yeah, I hour do and love a, this rod. Hour and a half of fun. Nice and smooth with this because I have no idea what it is. It's not a bream, I've got no idea. I wonder if it's a big ray. It feels sort of flat, yeah, like a... It might up. be a big ray, because... It's coming up funny. Like a flatfish does. Yeah. Planing in the water in the tide. It's coming up quite strange, a bit differently to... Say, I'll tell you what, just, to, like just move, just real smooth, because that's on a 15 pound trace. The end is, is a 15 pound trace, so nice and smooth. God. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a good bend in there. I've, I'm gonna check this bag over. Yeah, you got the chum bag as well. Okay. It's a, it's, it's something, something Whoa, in the chum. Oh, what the bloody hell is that? Ray. What the hell is that? That's a big ray. Oh, it's a big ray and the chum. Oh, it's an undulate. Oh, what a beauty. 
net. What a beauty. Hang on a second. That is. Look, at, look that. at that fish. That's my first ever undulate ray as well. First, well, that is a crackerjack undulate where I can tell you. Let's get that net. Hang on, I'm going to get the net, guys, and put the camera down. Right, I'm going to now net my first ever undulate ray. Now, I don't know average size of these species, but Dad is saying this is a big ray. That's a good one, yeah. Go for it. Take it slow, watch she doesn't go back on you. Watch she doesn't. Oh, he's not going to fit in the net. Just as you in. Was yeah. on there. Look oh, at that. Get that in. Yeah. In you go. Woo, man, that's a biggie. That's a good fish. Look at that one. Wow. That is. That's a totally lump. awesome. That's a lump. That's worth the trip out. Unbelievable. And there is the squid, and that's what I put it down for. Well, I'll tell you what, we lucked out there. Bit yeah. of totally awesome luck. That is totally awesome right there. Oh, let's Wheel him in, let's check him out. God, that, uh, that fish is probably, well, it's well into double figures. I'd say he's probably 14, 15 yeah. pounds. Wow. Let's get, we've got to get that still of that. Well, look at this. Lovely, lovely markers. What were they known as, Dad, as well? Another fit? Another... I think they were known as a painted ray. Painted I'm not ray. sure. Though. They've got all some small spines here, little rough bits here, but lovely, lovely markings, spots and lines. There's a male fish here. You can tell by the claspers at the back here. That's a male fish. And they also have thorns just there on the back of their tail there and up the back. Nice double figure, double figure ray. Yeah, I'll tell you mate, And you my know. first ever undulate ray. Look at those eyes as well. Lovely golden what? yellow eyes. Wayne says he loves... He loves the eyes of rays, they look aliens. They do, yeah. We're going to release this, hopefully get a bit of underwater footage for you guys. You've got to recover them for a bit as well. I reckon he might be heavier than you think. I reckon he might go 14. Oh, if I lift him up, that's yeah. a big fish. I'd say, that, I'd say that's 14. Yeah. That's a 14. That is exactly what it says on my shirt right there. Totally awesome fishing. I'm going to hold him here. Guys, we're in again. We just put the underlip ray back that Mike had. Turn round, whack a dude, rod's going over. Definitely a bream. Tell you what, it's not just a bream. <laughs> oh man, it's a double dose of black bream. Oh my god. Look at it. I'll tell you what, the back was a nice fish. That, that's a good that fish. That's a nice fish. I've got to watch it don't fall off to one of those small hooks. Oh yes, please, ladies. This is totally awesome black bream fishing. Look at that. This other one's a nice fish too. A couple of nice fish. Look, both mouth hooked. Tiny little weight. Let's take them off and we'll get them put back. Digging away here. Looks to be hopefully another bream. We've, I think we've had four bream. Dad just had a double hook up. We had an undulate ray, my first undulate ray. A couple of dogfish and some mackerel. Oh, going well on that right and light rod. Good little take. Oh, there he is. Nice bream. Yeah. Look at this bream. And the markings on this as well. Nice lip hooked again. Just that's, that's my PB bream, I say. Yeah, I'll take it. Is, yeah, that's a nice bream. What tip spike? Yeah. Look at that. Look at the colours on that lovely blue, blue eye there at the tip of their eye. Lovely fish, but we don't need to eat these fish here on Tony Olson awesome Fishing Show. We just show you how to catch them. We're going to get this one back and hopefully get some more. But what a fish! Nice little bream there. And the tides on the slack, we just put another bag out too. Yep, there we go. Just hold them there, and they should just swim straight off. Off he goes. Oh, fish off! Fish hey! off <laughs> <laughs> I do like this game. Yep. When the conditions are right, it just goes to show that right chum bag. conditions, the chum bag, and you can have some good sport on light tackle. Another bream? Another bream! Oh, 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 I do oh, like those fish. They pull hard. This is number six. Six bream. Way. Oh, nice. that's a nice That's bream. a nice silver one. It's going like a mackerel. There we go. Oh, it's a fatty. The black bream. And that is actually quite it's a nice silver a very one, very silver yeah. fish, that one, Very yeah. silver fish. And they're very, you, obviously you can't see this because we're on the field, but they're very smooth one way, they're like a shark, very smooth one way, very rough the other way. Quite rough fish that way. But let's get him back and hopefully get some more. And away.
Oh yes, Thornback Ray. Not a big one, guys. It's a bit larger than one you put on a second class parcel. But, tell you what, another species. There we go, what a pretty one. What a pretty little ray that one is, a beauty. Look at that, and there you can see, you might be able, if I can balance him, you might just see the thorns on the top of his head, right behind his eyes he's got thorns, all the way down that back, thorns, thorns, thorns. That's a small one, but these can grow up to double figures, and beyond. I mean, I think somewhere up over 30 pounds, I mean, that's stupendous. This is only a little one, look at those barbs on the back of his tail. Back he goes, because all you want to catch a few more, they bream. The wind's got up, I was just cranking the lead in light rod and a garf has just grabbed it. So yet another species on the bream gear. There it comes. Whoa. And that is not a bad old garfish really. Now come here, you've got to get these, he says getting skewered, right behind the head. Just hold it behind the head like that. They got little teeth in there. So make sure you get the hook just out nice and easy like that. And there's his beak. Is that not a weird looking fish? Look at it. Long, narrow, and it actually has green bones. Which a lot of people don't eat these. I've actually used them for sharks. They're called blue sharks. I don't want to run out of mackerel. Chop the head off and use them. But let's get it back. We don't eat them, but they've got green bones. They are perfectly good to eat if you want to. And you can see that little beak have already bite me. Ah, oh, mommy, you bit me. And so they grab their prey there and they feed it back down into their mouth. Pop him back. Away with you! Well guys, it's getting to the end now. We've had a real good time getting those bream. Doggies, it's still going. Bream have gone off. We've moved once, put another chum bag down. I'll come out to the camera and show you. And there's a rats. So we've got a real old mixed days fishing. With that chum bag, I guess the wind's gone up to about a, well, it's about a three southwesterly now. Most of the other boats have all moved, like all the other boats have all moved. It's only the totally awesome lot that's stupid enough to stay here. But we'll give it a little while longer, and there you go, nice rass. Finish off that little session. 10 minute warning, guys, and we're off home. What a day we've had.